Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Just Get Fit with Nikki. Today, we are talking about emotional eating and five things to try if you are an emotional eater. However, before I jump into today's episode, I wanted to ask you two huge favors. And that is one, if you enjoyed this podcast, make sure you hit that subscribe button. This will ensure you automatically get notified when I have new podcast episodes, which is every week. The second favor I have is if you are an Apple user, please scroll down to the bottom and leave a five-star review and a comment. I love hearing from you. Doing this honestly makes it so much easier for my podcast to be heard by new users. And that is something that I really appreciate because there are so many people struggling with their health and nutrition and finding a sustainable approach. So getting these episodes out there is so important to me. So thank you for that. Now let's get to it. Emotional eating is something that a lot of us struggle with. I was a big time emotional eater. When I'm happy, I eat. When I'm sad, I eat. When I'm stressed, I eat. And these are really challenging things sometimes. And they don't always feel like a negative thing. I know when I'm happy and I'm in like a celebratory mood, I don't go, oh, this is a bad thing to be doing. I go, I'm happy. I'm like, YOLO, let's go to it. This is, you know, weekend vibes. And sure, maybe the next day I might feel a little bit differently, but in the moment, it's definitely not something I think of as negative. Um, I'm also someone who, you know, deals with stress and anxiety and I have for most of my life. And so coping with food was something that I definitely would do. And I always felt that it was like, oh, this is just how I am. This is how I'm always going to be. And I'll never be able to overcome this or anything like that. And I want you to know that it is possible to have different outcomes and to feel differently towards food. Um, I know it doesn't always feel like that. And sometimes it very much feels out of your control. So this is why I've put this episode together to give you some ideas and suggestions. Obviously there are lots of different ways to approach this. And this is something that I go much more in depth with, with my one-on-one clients, because it is a really big topic, but I want to give you a little bit of a you know, a starting place. And my suggestion is before, like in this moment today, I want you to stop and think about the last time you experienced emotional eating, whether it was last night, just now, you know, last month, whatever it is. And I want you to think about that and how you felt. Did you feel happy, sad, angry, stressed, anxious? Did you feel out of control? You know, what kind of food were you reaching for? At what point did you start eating? At what point did you stop eating? And I want you to think about all the answers to those questions. And these are things that, honestly, it's not necessarily fun to think about, but I want you to reframe it in your mind like this. We think about these things and reflect back on them. So future you can have a different outcome. So when you have similar emotions and feelings and experiences, the outcome could be something that is more positive and something that you don't go, oh, I feel awful now, or I wish I hadn't done that. So when you think about that last time, can you pinpoint a trigger? Is there something where you go, oh, that just set me off and that's what led to me you know, going into the fridge or going into the freezer or the pantry and getting out, you know, whatever food it is that you eat, whether it's ice cream, whether it's chocolate, whether it's, you know, chips, and that you were reaching for emotionally, what was the trigger for you? And this is not necessarily an easy question. It might be accumulation of things, meaning, oh, well, I had a really bad day at work and then I came home and I was so tired and this wasn't working and then I had a call from someone and, you know, maybe it's the feeling of being overwhelmed. Maybe it's the feeling of, you know, nothing is going your way or you're overly exhausted or you've got too much on your plate at work and you still said yes to something and so now you're just so overwhelmed and so you go, well, you know what, I deserve some food. And this is something that, it's important to think about. It's important to think about what are your triggers or trigger that lead to emotional eating. And this is kind of when you eat 
even though you're not hungry. You eat as a mechanism to feel better in the moment for comfort, for, you know, relief. But the reason you're eating has really nothing to do with hunger. You're not going, oh, I need something to eat. I'm really hungry. I need to feel my body. No, you're going, oh my gosh, I need to feel better. I need these emotions to stop. I, you know, I'm, you're really treating something else. The, the thing that you are trying to address has nothing to do with hunger. And so when you can actually try to get closer to pinpointing the trigger, it's going to be easier to move on to number two. However, sometimes these steps are a little bit of a cycle, meaning you might come back to number one after going through one through five, because maybe you go, huh, yeah, that was a trigger, but maybe I actually missed something else that is another trigger for me as well. So when you kind of pinpoint in your trigger, what I want you to do is be on the lookout for this emotion, because rarely do we have something happen all of a sudden and we kind of go, oh, I'm going to reach for food. For a lot of us, it tends to be a slow buildup, meaning the acknowledgement of going, oh, I feel really stressed. And just that, that feeling on its own. If you can acknowledge that and go, oh, I'm feeling stressed. Okay. How do I address this feeling? How do I address the stress? And sometimes it's a combination of doing something, meaning like, oh, I'm stressed about A. What can I do about A? And sometimes the answer is, you can't do anything. This is beyond your control. The ball isn't someone else's court. And well, sometimes you need to acknowledge that and go, okay, I literally can't do anything about this. So stressing does not help me. I'm going to put this on the back burner. I'm going to let it be. And if and when I can do something, well, then sure. Then I can take things up again and be proactive. So I think If you can be on the lookout for your triggers, meaning, oh, when I'm exhausted, this happens, or when I have a really big project at work. So the next time you have a really big project, you can go, okay, I know now that I've got a big project that this tends to be a stressor for me. I tend to be overworked. I don't sleep enough. I don't have enough, you know, healthy options available to me. And so I reach for food as a coping mechanism, or I reach for food because I'm just so burnt out, whatever it is. But being on the lookout for these emotions or these feelings that lead to emotional eating is another step. It's step number two. Because if you can identify that in advance, you can then move on to number three, which is picking another strategy. And what I mean is, While you are in a place where you are feeling good, you're feeling in control, your emotions are in check, I find it really helpful to make some plans or suggestions for yourself for future you, for future stressed you, for future emotional you, for future burnt out you, where you go, okay, in those moments, I'm not the best thinker or the most clear headed. I'm more emotional and I tend to have less a log- less of a logical brain. And this is me personally. I know when I'm stressed and emotional, I'm not like, all right, Nikki, let's sit down and be very logical about this. I'm like, nope, nope, nope. The world is against me. Everything is falling apart. It's over. Let's just throw it all out the window. That is not a very rational approach. And I know that, but I know that, you know, when I'm outside of the situation. And so planning some strategies in advance when I have my logical brain on can be helpful. And I'm a big pen and paper person. I love writing things down. I like lists. And so I make lists of things that I can do for when I'm stressed. So for me, that'll be a breathing exercise. That'll be going for a walk. That'll be taking a nap. It'll be talking to a friend. It will be, you know, a number of things. However, these are things that help me in moments of stress. It might mean have a good cry. You know, sometimes I just hold things in so long and really having a big cry, it doesn't fix it, but it releases all that stress I've been holding in and allows me to kind of go, okay, now what can I do and how do I tackle these issues? So I think if you can actually plan ahead and go, okay, the next time I'm feeling really overwhelmed and I'm really stressed, I'm going to try one of these five things. I'm going to have a glass of, you know, 
a cup of tea. I'm going to watch an episode. I'm going to listen to my favorite music and, you know, sit outside of the patio. I'm going to, you know, call a friend. I'm going to clean. <laughs> I'm going to do laundry. Whatever it is that distracts you and gives you a sense of calm. And that is different for everyone. Some people go, I really like cleaning because it's really just, you know, methodical in how I do things, or I love organizing, or I love, you know, whatever. Everyone's so different. So write some things down that will actually help you feel better, feel more in control of your emotions. Because like we've talked about, this is emotional eating. And emotion is what leads you to eating. It has nothing to do with hunger. So if you can actually tackle that emotion with one of your strategies, you're going to be able to, you know, put on that logical brain or that, you know, logical hat of yours and go, okay, now that I'm feeling calmer, this is how I can move forward as opposed to going, this is how I'm feeling I need to eat. And eating is what will solve the situation. Because I think we know with our logical brain that eating, unless hunger is the issue, meaning unless you are truly hungry, food is not the solution. And that's something I try to remind myself that if I check in with myself and I go, Hey, Nikki, are you actually hungry? And I go, no, I'm not hungry. Well, then I go, why am I standing in front of the fridge? Why I'm standing in front of the freezer or the pantry? Why am I holding this ice cream? If I'm not hungry and this is not a craving where I go, oh, I, I was thinking about ice cream all day and I'm like, oh, I really need it. If I go, why am I here? Is this a reaction to a feeling or, or an emotion I'm having? And if it is, and I go, okay, let's take a step back. Let's do one of my five things from my list. And if I still need this, well, then I can come back to it. But you're putting a little bit of space and time between you and that food. It's not that it's going anywhere. It's not that you can't have it. It's not that it's off limits. But realizing that maybe you're not hungry and maybe it's not a craving that you need to honor. Well, take that into consideration and go, okay, I can absolutely come back in 30 minutes or an hour and eat this. If I need it still, I can eat this. But in the meantime, I'm going to do A, B, or C. And this is something where I want you to think about when you're doing something new, which this what might be for you. If you're doing something new and you're a big and emotional, if you are a big emotional eater, meaning this happens, you know, once a week, think about this in the big picture, because I keep saying this, this might not always work well. And I don't want you to feel badly. If you actually do emotionally eat and you go to town on the pint of ice cream and you finish it all, you feeling guilty or shameful about it doesn't help because now you're stressed and emotional and burnt out or whatever it is. And now you also feel guilty about what you just ate. So you really just double down on not so great feelings. So instead of feeling bad, this is why I kind of wanted to front load you with this is know that sometimes you are not going to have the outcome that you want. You can make the best laid plans and, you know, have your five pre-planned out strategies and still emotionally eat. And this is where I want you to take that step back and think big picture, as I mentioned, if over the next 10 times you are feeling triggered to emotional eat. If out of the next 10 of those times, you only eat four times and the other six times you go with one of your strategies, that's incredible. Okay. And I don't want you to look at it as like, oh, I failed 40% of the time. I want you to look at it as, you know what? I did 60% better than before. I made you know, choices six out of 10 times that were better than in the past, meaning I, you know, honored what I needed, I took care of myself, I managed my emotions and my stress. And that is huge. Okay, it's amazing progress. So thinking big picture, as opposed to focusing on Oh, that didn't go well every single time. That's okay. Because emotional eating is very much a habit like we do. So if you're someone who gets up and has a coffee every single day and has been doing this for years, well, guess what? Getting up for the next week and not having coffee every single day would be a hard habit to all of a sudden change. You might go, oh, oh, I forgot. Oh, I'm not supposed to have this. Oh, but I really need this. And you created this habit. So changing a habit isn't always an easy thing because you're essentially creating 
new habits. So don't just assume that you're going to fix this overnight. Give yourself the grace and compassion to know this might not always go perfectly. And that's okay. If it doesn't go well, tomorrow is a new day. I can always try again tomorrow or I can try something new tomorrow. Or you can go, you know what? When I feel this way, this strategy that I've put down, you know, this number four on this sheet doesn't actually seem to be working. So maybe I just need to kind of cross that off and move on. And it doesn't mean you're a failure. You just eliminated one possible option that, you know, well, in practice, this doesn't work for me. All right. And number five, this is something that will apply to some of you, not all of you, but depending on how much of an emotional eater you are depending on the frequency, it can also be helpful to go, okay, what are the foods I tend to reach for and eat more often when I'm emotional? And how do they make me feel? And if the answer is, oh, I'm an emotional eater and this happens every week or every couple days, and I tend to overeat, you know, certain foods that are quite clear, then I would say, consider minimizing the foods that you overeat or you emotionally eat minimize them in the house. So it's not that you can't have them. It's not that they're off limits, but you're decreasing your accessibility to them, making it harder for you to overeat these things in emotional times. And I think sometimes it can be good to have a little bit of space and go, okay, you know what? I really want this because I'm feeling this way, but it means I'll have to go to the grocery store, which, you know, when it comes to it, a lot of us are a little bit lazy. I know I am. And when I'm emotional, I'm not going to go, okay, I'm going to go drive to the store, go get my ice cream. I'm going to be like, oh, that's, that's a lot of work. And so either I don't do it, or I have something else that perhaps is something that I won't eat as much of. So like I said, this is an option, but it's not going to be for everyone. And everyone has a different relationship with food and feels on what they should and shouldn't have in the house. So please, you know, take that as your own, make it your own in terms of it's, if it's a strategy you consider using. But like I've said, these are five things and five steps to go through and know that sometimes you might go through, you know, step number four and go, oh, that did not work. Maybe I need to go back to step number one and reassess and rethink about what my possible triggers might be and see if I actually missed anything. But this is really something that you're going to be working on more long term and probably lifelong because I think we live in a world where we have a lot of stress and pressure on us and it's almost like our baseline for stress is a lot higher than we realize and we tend to have this higher threshold or tolerance where we go oh everything's fine but everything might not be fine we're just used to feeling so stressed and anxious all the time that we think everything is fine and so that's also something really important to consider. All right, fam, that is a wrap. Hopefully these little strategies have helped. I would love to hear from you. And please don't forget, if you were looking to become a Just Get Fit member, if you were looking for workout programs, recipes, and wanting to learn to calculate your macros, you can head to www.justget.fit forward slash stronger and sign up to be a Just Get Fit member today.